A lot of people ask me how hard is Jump Master School. Let me answer by discussing prerequisites, the Jump Master pretest, school options, food, sleep, and physical training, the curriculum, testing requirements, and stress training. But first, let's finish this quick video from a nighttime mass tactical airborne operation with full combat gear. Prereqs for attending the U.S. Army Jumpmaster course include the following. You must be in an airborne unit and a jump billet. You must be an E-5 or higher in the Army, an E-4 or higher in other branches. You must be able to reach a bar that is 84 inches in the air while wearing your full combat equipment. You must have more than 12 months total on jump status. You must have 12 or more static line jumps from a high performance aircraft and you must pass the Jumpmaster pretest. The hardest part of the Jumpmaster pretest is the nomenclature exam. This is where you need to know the names of all the pieces of equipment associated with airborne operations. For example, these are not the parachute straps. This is the harness assembly. Number four isn't called the hook on the lowering line. It is called the ejector snap on the hook pile tape lowering line and heaven forbid you call five and six Velcro. It's called a hook or pile tap. You need to get a 70% or higher to get into this school. But consider this, you might get into the course by passing the pretest with a 70%, but every time you call a piece of gear by the wrong name, you and all of your colleagues are going to do push-ups. So I recommend that you go into the pretest knowing precisely what every piece of gear is called. Your unit jump master will give you a study guide or you can download one from the school's website. After you pass the nomenclature test, you will have 15 minutes to properly rig your combat gear. If you do this correctly, you will be given a pretest slip, which is valid for 90 days. Most jump masters attend school at Fort Benning, Georgia. These courses are taught by Black Hats, professional jump master instructors. I wouldn't go so far as to call them badge protectors, but I would say that they are very strict and professional and for the most part, don't have any sense of humor. The Jumpmaster Committee also sends mobile training teams or MTTs to other bases a few times a year. Think of this as an MTT visiting Fort Bragg to teach a course. These courses are still very demanding, but there is less instructors and they are not teaching on their home turf so they also have to be a bit more relaxed and flexible. And specific units are allowed to run their own Jumpmaster courses. I tried to get into the Jumpmaster course run by my Special Forces group, but it never seemed to fit into my deployment and training schedule. So I had to attend this schoolhouse at Fort Benning. 
There isn't food or sleep deprivation at Jumpmaster School, but you will have a few nights when you work past sunset and do night training and jumps. You do physical training on your own, so there's no need to worry about doing an hour of the airborne shuffle every day like at basic airborne school. Courses vary depending upon holidays, but you should expect three weeks of training. The course curriculum includes classroom lectures and instruction and practical exercise to include rigging combat equipment, pre-jump training, aircraft inspection procedures, jump commands, actions in the aircraft for both the jump master and safety, jump master personnel inspections, duties of the DZ STL or drop zone support team leader, and safety duty practical exercise. Let's move on to tests and evaluation performance measures. We already mentioned the nomenclature pre-test, but there is also a test for the pre-jump. This is where you need to memorize the entire pre-jump speech perfectly. For those of you who don't know what this is, consider it a safety rehearsal that all jumpers do before each jump to remind them of their points of performance and what to do upon exiting an aircraft. I remember practicing day and night for weeks to memorize that speech, so plan ahead. Jumpers, hit it! There is also a written examination covering general subject knowledge. I don't remember this test being hard at all. And then there is practical work in the aircraft, or PWAC, which is a lot of fun. And that was the problem. I was very comfortable in the aircraft, so of course I had a major safety violation and almost got kicked out of Jumpmaster training. Whenever a jump master is inspecting the door and preparing to give commands, he needs to have three points of contact with the airplane. That is usually two feet and a hand gripping the wall. But being stupid and confident in the airplane, I stood up by the open door, let go of the wall, and started issuing commands without three points of contact. The instructor tackled me back into my seat. He called me an idiot, which I was, and reminded me of the three points of contact rule. Five minutes later, the aircraft circled around the same location and I did my jump master duties in a much safer way the second time. The final test is the jump master personnel inspection or JMPI. This is where the jump master inspects the paratrooper and his or her combat equipment to ensure that it is safe. Back on the teams, we usually spend three minutes a person to thoroughly and safely do a JMPI. But at Jumpmaster School, you must JMPI or inspect the parachute rigs of three rigged soldiers in five minutes. I've already made a video about stress training, and this is the perfect example of using stress training to see if a student really has mastered the material. The basic thought is that if you can do a JMPI perfectly in a minute and a half under pressure, then you will do it perfectly in three minutes when you're not under pressure. All in all, I had a good time at Jumpmaster School and was impressed with my cadre. I had a black hat who hated SF guys and treated me poorly. I got extra attention, extra duties, and extra push-ups. I was a bit cockier back then, so I probably deserved most of it. But on the other hand, I also had a black hat who wanted to go SF and who pulled me aside a dozen times to ask for advice on how to prepare for selection. A few weeks after graduation, I was back in South America, where I got to do my first jump master duties, in Spanish. Jumping out of an airplane beats having a real job, but it is even more fun when you are sticking your head out of the ramp, looking for the drop zone release signals. Okay, there you have it. A rundown on what to expect from jump master school. If you're a jump master, let me know what was your fondest memory of jump master school or your jump master duties in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to keep on learning, and don't forget to forward this video to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?